it's been a month. <laughs> So at the end of last month, at the end of October, I went to visit family and it was great. It was beautiful, perfect weather to just hang out with loved ones outside. It was great. And then I got home and about 80% of us came down with RSV. Might I just say, mild cold symptoms, my absolute butt. It was terrible. Everyone, it, we were all sick for weeks. I had about three weeks of being pretty bad and now I'm just getting out of it. So now that I'm out of it, I can go back to my favorite fall and winter pastime, which is crocheting and knitting. I go back and forth depending on how I'm feeling, but right now it's crocheting mostly. This year especially, I've really taken up a lot of my free time willingly. That makes it sound like it's against my will. I've willingly taken up a lot of my spare time with crocheting and my words can't exactly explain why. So I made this. Hopefully that makes it clear. <laughs> but anyway, I thought I had a great idea, which was convertible sweater, <laughs> which basically meant in my brain, a sweater where you could detach the sleeves and it becomes a sweater vest. And I'm not sick anymore. And I still think that's a great idea. <laughs> my inspiration not only comes from the highly fashionable cargo pant. Actually, you know what? I take that back. Cargo pants are kind of coming back into style, but also from 15th and 16th century sleeves, where many times they would be either pinned, tied, or temporarily stitched to the bodice. So that not only is that like an inventive way to do sleeves, it also meant that you could interchange them, which would be so cool if I can make several pairs of sleeves for one sweater. Oh, it's gonna be so fun. I'm only gonna do one pair this time because, um, spoilers, I'm already at the end of this project right now and it's taken like double the amount of time that I thought it would. But in the future, I'll probably do more and I think that's gonna be so fun. But anyway, now that I've said all I need to say for the intro, let's get started. The first line of business is to crochet all of the granny squares. The pattern I used was one I found on YouTube called a Vintage Granny Square by Happy Berry Crochet. I won't be showing you specifics on how I made these squares because I'd rather you go watch their video. They do a great job teaching you how to make these, so go check them out. I'll be leaving the link in the description. I made a rough drawing in order to get a basic outline of how many I would need, and the number came out to about 80. I ended up using 75, which is the best I've ever done at guessing how many granny squares I'd need. By this point, I was over the halfway mark and my hand was starting to hurt and my brain felt like it was starting to melt. So the next day I decided to take a break with a Christmas decorating interlude.
and now I could go back to crocheting with sparkling trees and lights, which made it better. This was the last day of crocheting the squares and let me tell you, I was getting a bit restless. But at long last, here they are all done, as well as four triangles so I can make a v-neck at the front. I've done it. Okay, so part one is done. Um, towards the end there, I was struggling a little bit. <laughs> um, I don't know how people do crochet blankets because I has to be like at least four to five times more than this. And around like 50 or 60, my brain kept thinking, you must be done now. So I kept redoing my math and no, it kept coming out to about 80. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to start placing them out in a way that I think will look good and I will come back when that is done. So be right back. basic of the front. This is going to be a v-neck here and it's going to be open down the front and I'm going to kind of give it a little bit of a finish uh, band around the neckline and down center front and then a little bit on the bottom as well and then it will tie right here just one tie. That's the plan. This is the basic outline. <laughs> I'll probably like mess around and make sure that this is my favorite patterns and that I like all these next to each other. Uh, but I'll basically just start stitching all these together for probably another one to two days. Awesome, my hands are gonna hurt so much, but it's gonna be great, it's gonna be worth it. Let's go. Okay, so now all that is done. The next step is going to be adding a like hem down here. So like a little band, it's probably gonna be like an inch. And then I'm gonna do the same thing around the neckline here. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is probably do like half an inch of binding around these arms eyes, I think. I think those are my next steps. <laughs> all right, I'll come back to you when that's done. Ah yes, what a beautiful shot of my camera strap. I made a slightly wider band across the hem of the sleeves and center front, with the smallest band being at the top of the sleeves. And then it came time to add buttons and loops so that the bodice and sleeves could attach. I knew I had a huge collection of leftover buttons and I looked for a set of similarly sized buttons. 
I probably would have preferred matching buttons, but I thought I should try to use stuff I already had. I placed the buttons on the inside of the bodice so that they would be hidden and attached loops in the same placement on the inside of the sleeve. And now, it's time to look at the final product. Frame, no, I am not. So, this project went much longer than I thought it would, but also much better than I thought it would because there was many moments where I was like, is this even going to work at all? So it worked. So I'm happy. <laughs> and I really think it's beautiful and this granny square is very unique and I'm just excited to see how versatile this could be, which I know it can be. I'm excited to wear just the sweater vest part with a tank top underneath in the spring. I'm excited to crochet some different sleeves to go along with it. A couple of things that I wish I had maybe done differently, maybe. I actually think I might like the inside, the right side of the slip stitching. I think this is technically the wrong side of the slip stitching. But then at the same time, I'm like, but this looks so unique. So I'm kind of 50-50 about it. Eventually, I am going to have to change out the ribbon. I can already see that it's starting to fray and come off of the stitching, which I knew it was cheap going in, but I just wanted to see if it would work, but that's a problem for future me. So you're welcome, future me. <laughs> Overall, very happy with it. I don't really know if this is a good tutorial for people, but if you want to try it, go for it. I'd love to see what your versions look like. That's going to be it for me this week. I hope you had a fun time watching me have a fun time, and I hope to see you back here next week. Thank you so much, and bye!